Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti presenting case 102 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of retrograde decanalization of the native left anterior deserting artery through a degenerated saphenous vein graft. The patient presented with unstable angina. He was known to have osteal occlusion of the LAD. The LAD was actually filling through a saphenous vein graft that was significantly diseased and degenerated in its proximal portion. There was actually an aneurysm formation at the proximal part of the saphenous vein graft. On another view, there is significant disease proximal and the aneurysm in the more distal part of the saphenous vein graft. There are two ways to treat this patient. One would be to do PCI of the saphenous vein graft, although it has a risk of embolization and probably higher stenosis rates, as well as the chance for the aneurysm expanding in size. The other alternative is to recanalize the native LAD. He was therefore referred to our institution for PCI of the LAD CTO. We did a dual injection to determine the characteristics of the lesion. There was a proximal cap that was blunt, as we knew from before. The length was hard to assess, but probably was in the range of 40 to 50 millimeters. The distal vessel was small, filling through the vein graft and the vein graft itself was a nice collateral for retrograde access. And in another view, there's once again a relatively uh, lengthy part of occlusion between the ostium of the LAD and the mid part of the LAD. We were able to advance a Corsair microcatheter through the vein graft into the LAD and retrograde into the distal cap. After doing that, we were able to advance a guided wire further down, but unfortunately, the wire went into the subintimal space. We did have a safety wire into the circumflex, which is very critical because attempts to wire through the left main can cause dissection and potential occlusion of the circumflex coronary artery. In this case, we actually did um, an attempt for retrograde stingray we were able to deliver a stingray balloon through the vein graft, through the LAD, all the way to the proximal LAD in the left main ostium. However, the attempts to gain true lumen access through the stingray were unsuccessful. However, the retrograde wire did provide a marker for the course of the LAD. And after the wire was left in place, we were then able to advance an undergrade wire through the course of the LAD that was dilated with a small balloon all the way to the mid LAD. And actually we were able to advance a soft workhorse guide wire through the mid LAD into the second diagonal branch. We then proceeded with the standing of the proximal and uh, mid LAD after we removed the retrograde equipment. And that restored undergrade flow in the LAD. However, the patient started having chest discomfort. And we had a, a question about why the patient was going to have chest discomfort. We did stand the left main, given that we have been ballooning close to the left main, but the patient's chest pain did not change. We did have still T3 flow down the LAD. So it remained a mystery as to why we had the, the patient having chest pain. However, upon more careful review of the angiogram, the cause of chest pain became apparent. It was actually because we had inadvertently occluded a fairly sizable first diagonal branch that was originating immediately distal to the distal cap, and that was lost after we did the undergrade wire escalation and wired from the undergrade into the second diagonal branch. We did some attempts to wire in the diagonal, but unfortunately we were unable to advance a wire there. So in the end, we standed the LAD and the left main, and we had to accept loss of the side branch, which did lead to a periprocedural myocardial infarction. The patient did, however, have an uneventful recovery and was chest pain free afterwards. So in summary, this case shows that uh, patients who have degenerated saphenous vein grafts may be sometimes treated with um, opening the native artery lesion or CTO, as was the case in this particular patient. However, these cases are not likely to be easy. The distal cap 
in patients who have bypass grafts tend to be harder than if there is no bypass graft because of the higher pressure. And it can be a very complex procedure, as was the case in this patient. One, once we do retrograde, trying to go back into the LAD or the circumflex, we should be careful about injuring the left main. In this particular case, we had the retrograde wire subintimal into the left main, which could have caused acute closure of the left main, occluding flow in the circumflex and causing significant hemodynamic instability. And that is why it's better in cases like this to actually advance a guideliner or guide catheter extension to the proximal LAD and do the re-entry into the proximal LAD inside the lesion without affecting the left main. Finally, when dissection re-entry techniques are used, there is always a chance of losing side branches, as was the case with the first diagonal in this patient. Being careful about those side branches and ideally protecting them with a guide wire is the best way to minimize their loss with a subsequent ischemia and potentially less outflow and higher stenosis rate as well as per procedural myocardial infarction. Thank you.